This conference will now be recorded. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. It's one o'clock on Tuesday, uh, August 18th, 2020. I'd like to acknowledge that we are on Treaty One land and the traditional homeland of the Métis people. Introductions, we have Councillor Randall with us Hello. remotely. Councillor Axworthy is with us remotely. And around the table, Mike. Councillor Bartmanovich. <laughs> Councillor Kumka. Raymond Wall, CAO. And Penny McMorris Reed. Welcome, everybody. Um, first item up is the adoption of the agenda. Uh, be it resolved, the agenda be adopted as presented. May I have a mover? And then we can have Irwin and a seconder. Mike, uh, Steve, pardon me. Thank you. Any discussion? Any additions or deletions? All right, all those in favor? Carried, thank you. Moving on to the minutes of the August 4th, 2020 regular meeting of council, which have been circulated to all. We have resolved that the minutes of the August 4th, 2020 regular council meeting be adopted as presented. May I have a mover? Mike, seconder, Steve, thank you. Any discussion on the minutes? Okay, all those in favor? Harry, thank you. No delegations today, so we will move on to committee reports and we'll start with Mike with public works, please. Okay, uh, I guess one of the, one of the hot issues uh, at King Edward Beach, the, uh, the lifeline has been became detached and uh, we've been waiting for calm water for uh, public uh, coordinated effort between public works and uh, members of the yacht club to try and navigate close to the area and reattach. Uh, it's reported that the water is calm now and uh, I have asked for an update from public works to see when and if the uh, lifeline will be put back into place. So there's an anchor point out, um, out in the lake. Yes, there are. Yeah. The anchors are, I think, still there. Mm -hmm. Trevor did pick up two yeah, more. I thought I was just okay. Yeah. Yes, that's Trevor correct. Trevor did pick up two more anchors, and uh, the Yacht Club guys are going to use their boat and their power to fix it all up. But it has been too rough. It's, it's been too rough. Today, today was the first calm day. Yeah, and no, I don't want anybody and risking And the guys are probably back at work, the Yacht Club guys. So, yeah. City, so they will get to it yes, as soon as they can. Uh, door to door garbage pickup continues uh, until September 9th. Hmm. Yeah, I've got. Uh, I have a question in about uh, about that as well. Uh, wasn't able to talk to Trevor because he's busy this morning. Uh, bear proof garbage bins. We've got about 30 left. They are the, the bin is on display every Saturday at the at the community center country market. So please come by and uh, have a look at the bin. Uh, we have had a, a significant uptake in business um, with, uh, with, the, with people speaking at the country market. So come by and see it and be impressed. I had an opportunity to talk with a couple of the garbage people on the truck and I asked, how do you like the new bins? And they said, they're great. We don't have to clean up any mess. You know, uh, we're not having to deal with problems caused by the bears and the dogs and the things. And they were quite happy with it. Good. Uh, I'm inviting you. On the bins, uh, sorry to interject, uh, but this is sort of relevant. Um, on the bins, I had a bear last night up my driveway in my backyard, came over and sniffed my brand new shiny bear proof bin and turned around and wandered off again. So I can testify that they seem to work just fine. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. May have learned by experience already. Who knows? They're smart animals. They do learn. And they're hungry right now. Like yes. Yeah. Remember, yeah. Yeah, we're getting very hungry, buddy. We're getting very close to the time of year where a bear's caloric requirements per day goes from 5,000 to like 25,000 oh. calories. So they are going to be on the hunt. So uh, that's what this guy was doing. First one we've seen this year. So they're they're out on the hunt. Absolutely, Mike. I was going to ask anybody who who uh, who's who's watching and uh, and has had a bear take a go at their bear resistant bin. I would like to hear from them. We've had 
we've had one event that I know thus far, and uh, the mayor was not able to get into the bin and took it for a pretty good ride too, um, but wasn't able to breach the bin. So I'm I'm happy to report that. Moving on. <laughs> The deadline for ordering a civic sign is Wednesday, September 9th. For installation this year. Uh, for this installation fall. this fall. Uh, these are essential. Uh, in the case of a fire or a medical emergency, folks, uh, at night, these signs are indispensable. Um, take it from someone who has delivered a lot of bear bins uh, in the BRA. Sometimes it's it's very difficult to tell which address you're delivering the bin, and I've had to be back and forth a couple of times. So these things can be could be the matter of life and death. Uh, Public Works, as everybody knows, continues to work on dead tree removal. Um, there is still maintenance work going on on roads, roadways, and boulevards, folks. Please, you cannot have your brush piles out until September 14th. Okay, I have seen a couple of uh, brush piles on boulevards already. Um, also, uh, maintenance of paths, uh, there was a little bit of a hue and cry on who's putting sand on the path between Macaulay and the golf course. Uh, well, it turns out it's actually a base. So, uh, what the golf course is doing is, is they are, uh, they're, they're reinforcing the base of the path to make it, uh, more usable by, by cyclists and pedestrians. Uh, and that was only a short stretch. And it was, I yeah. wrote it the other day, the short stretch that they upgraded there. Okay, that was just a couple of yards, I believe. Yeah. Okay, um, preventative maintenance is, is ongoing on all municipal equipment. I count my blessings every day that we actually have our very own mm. heavy duty mechanic employed full time with the RM. Uh, we're going to get a lot more use out of our emergency equipment and our public works equipment for, for years to come. Of course, water samples from the well at the fire hall and the Albert Beach pump house are taken to Winnipeg on a regular basis and are tested. And oh, what did the I say? Water treatment plant and the Albert Beach water treatment plant. Oh, oh yes, and that's right. Yes, that's what weekly. Uh, is it? I it's by, 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 it's by every two weeks. It's, every two weeks yeah. is done. So, uh, public works continues to be busy, busy, busy. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. I, I, I did just want to make any other questions yeah. uh, just, just on the uh, address sign which is that there have been cases where some of the ambulances have been looking for over a half hour to try to find the uh, to try to find the address that they're called to um, so they're not going to give up until they find the house the problem is is that it, as Mike pointed out it can be life and death because you have that uh, you have such a long period of trying to find you, so it, it, it's vital that those addresses, that those address signs get out. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. All right, thank you, Mike. Moving on to finance, Erwin. Lynn is currently on holidays, so we were not able to get a complete package, uh, but I did get some highlights. These are final notes. Our cash position is increasing nicely as taxes are now being paid. Tax payments are a bit slower this year compared to last year. Our cash is down $291,000 lower than last year, but our unpaid taxes are up $180,000. So it's a bit of a wash. So perhaps COVID-19 is having some impact on mm -hmm. our slowing payments. Say I will have a full update next month. Please. All these and accurate report. Any questions for Erwin? All right, thank you very much. Protective services, Steve, we'll start with fire. Um, so there were a total of five calls in July. Uh, three of the calls were in the arm of Victoria Beach. One call was to assist a person in Victoria in the Victoria Beach yard uh, with injuries. One call was to a uh, structure fire that turned out to be a grease fire in an oven. Uh, smoke damage uh, was uh, done to the cottage, but there was no injuries. Uh, the last call was for a person overdue on a personal watercraft. Uh, the person was found on shore and again with no injuries. Uh, there's also a, a call in the arm of Alexander. 
uh, to help with uh, STARS helicopter landing. On arrival, it was determined that the STARS uh, was not needed, but the department did help uh, the ambulance with some uh, crowd control. The last call uh, was a mutual aid call in St. Clement. Uh, uh, they helped uh, the East Beaches fire to control uh, control at uh, at a structure fire before it had before it had a chance to spread into in, uh, into other structures. It was a good opportunity to test the new uh, com uh, compressed air foam system. The CAF uh, system worked extremely well at knocking down the structure fire. Uh, we are not in service with uh, with the uh, MFR uh, unit currently. We have uh, we have. Uh, finally obtained all, all the per, uh, needed personal protective equipment to deal with uh, COVID-19 issues. Uh, we are uh, working on a new uh, on on a new more detailed policy for uh, for our medical and fire personnel and we'll be uh, training the per, uh, our personnel uh, with this new policy. Uh, we continue to maintain and repair our equipment and gear in preparation for any emergency uh, or other calls uh, we, uh, we are needed for. And just a reminder for, uh, for residents, the compressed air foam system um, is something that uh, this council uh, purchased, which uh, shoots uh, a large amount of foam onto a fire to knock it out immediately. It was one, it was one, of, the, uh, it was one of the pieces of equipment that we thought was uh, vital for uh, taking, out, uh, taking out fires and allows one, uh, one uh, firefighter to be able to go in and do the, uh, do the um, mission of a, of a crew uh, in, uh, while, the, uh, while, while they wait for enough people to be able to bring over uh, full, uh, a full truck. So it, it's working, which is great news. Thanks very much. Any questions for Steve? Fire? All right, Mike, we'll move on to police. Thanks again, Steve. Uh, I have no statistics uh, for this month because it seems that our police are just really, really busy mm -hmm. doing their job. Um, I just did want to mention uh, that, uh, that the police are, are doing fundraising for a lot of good causes like, uh, like the new BBCC playground, the East Beaches Animal Services, and also, and also uh, some, of their, some of their own initiatives. Um, very attractive Victoria Beach police uh, shirts, reasonably priced, comfortably cottony. I hope you will all uh, make sure to uh, take the opportunity to stop a cop, say hi, and uh, and purchase one of these handsome t-shirts or a sweatshirt or a yeti or a yeti mug Absolutely. they have some really really exciting colors if i get one of those shirts can i end up tickets you can indeed <laughs> you can hand out all the tickets you want yeah <laughs> i will have i'll i'll have a i'll have a full statistical report uh, next month okay thank you all right any questions I do not have any special events for 2020 to report. I don't believe it. I know. So we'll move on to the golf course. Mike, thank you uh, for bringing the money in, by the way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Money's coming in from the golf course. And according to Carl, they're having a very good year. He thinks they're having an even better year uh, than last year, despite COVID. And, uh, and my, uh, my congratulations to Carl and his crew for uh, still managing to get people out enjoying our gem of a golf course, even under uh, COVID protocols. So uh, mm -hmm. good news that, uh, that the course is uh, doing so well. Mm -hmm. Beautiful weather. We should all be out there today. But we're here. But we're, but we're here. Thanks, Mike. Any other questions on the golf course? All right. <coughs> Thank you. Moving on to municipal buildings. There you well, go, Mr. Mees. Hello. Uh, on municipal buildings, I've uh, uh, submitted my report uh, to uh, Raymond and uh, and each of you. Um, uh, so I'll just uh, run over it uh, briefly. I've, I've received no uh, no uh, uh, feedback or, or comments from any of you. So I suppose I assume it, it speaks for itself. Um, the uh, as the summer season winds down. Um, uh, pretty well all the municipal building work uh, has been done, has been completed for, for this year. One exception is the uh, golf course, a few things left to do that we have deliberately moved to September so we don't interfere with their day-to-day -day operations. Um, so that's being looked after. Uh, you know about the uh, the door at the store, the ramps, 
uh, a bunch of work on the air conditioning at the bakery. It is now up to snuff, working fine, probably better than it's uh, than it's ever been. And you know about the Sandy Bay Steps, which is a, a bit of a success story. So it's pretty much under control this year, uh, and uh, within budget. I'd like to add, um, your uh, municipal buildings committee will now turn its attention to uh, uh, to next year. We have to start well in advance, as you know, itemizing what uh, uh, what needs to be done, putting prices on it, and getting ready for budgetary uh, uh, preparation. So, unless there's any uh, uh, unforeseen deficiencies. Uh, uh, pop up, I, th I think I can report that our municipal building work is uh, basically complete and, uh, and under control. And uh, that uh, completes my report. Thank you. That's a busy portfolio, Graham. Good job. Thank it you. Is, yeah. I know I was at the Sand Cliffs a week or so ago, and I noticed, I think Mike mentioned it earlier in the season, there's been a drop. Yeah. And the sand ladder is kind of Happen in the breeze a little yeah, bit. A little bit, yeah. So we do okay. have to get. Yeah, we need to get some some maintenance done. On yeah, the, on it, the yeah, yeah, and 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 that's to be expected. Wherever we have steps or stairs, there's a maintenance issue uh, that can't be uh, neglected. So uh, Mike and I are, are aware that uh, uh, we're going to have to uh, uh, do a few things a little differently at the bottom of the uh, of the uh, sand ladder at the cliffs. Yeah, I don't, you know, Mother Nature's going to win every time yeah. there, but uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's still, it works fairly well, but it's just that bottom, that bottom bit. But we've had a yeah. high water. Yeah. That's causing the ocean. Could, yeah. could you put some, some riprap rock at the bottom, the base? I have been contemplating a toe for the, for the bottom. Yeah. I've also been reading, yeah. I've also been reading up on, uh, on different types of riprap. They're, they're, the, the, the new thing in riprap now is not just solid rocks, but it's rocks mixed with vegetation. Mm -hmm. And just like the sand ladder, and, and it's it, it's already starting to do the job. It's actually holding vegetation on the on the uh, on the incline, which is good to see. Um, yeah. The rock with the vegetation also uh, helps to um, also helps to, uh, for lack of a better term, cement uh, the actual shoreline. Uh, by uh, by reinforcing its integrity with, with a complex root system, mm -hmm. so there are, there are things that uh, that the most, important to, uh, the most important thing that people need to remember about uh, the shoreline is the second that you start removing vegetation along the shoreline, then you are weakening that uh, that shore. So uh, the most if if we can encourage any sort of uh, veg uh, vegetative growth, um, mm -hmm. then you're going to be strengthening. Uh, the shoreline, and it, as Penny has pointed out, Mother Nature is always going to win. And it, it astonishes me every time that I, I put a shovel in the ground in my uh, in my reforestation efforts that we are literally sitting on an entire mound of sand. Um, but yeah. you will <laughs> slow it down. Yeah. 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 Um, I noticed someone, Graham, uh, got some correspondence a little while ago about go. Pardon me about the Bayview access number four. And how stairs are needed there. So that's something that we can add to your 2021 season. Uh, yes, it's uh, it's on it's on the uh, it's on the list to uh, uh, make the tour and see what can be done there. I mean, and because of his expertise in stairs and steps and beach, I'll probably try and enlist uh, the support of uh, my friend Mike to go look at them. It's on our list, right, Mike? Okay, great. I'm um, I'm scheduled to be there uh, later this week. I'll have a look. Right. And the, uh, the final final word: uh, the sand ladder at uh, at the cliffs. Um, uh, Mike and I will be keeping an eye. We gotta we gotta see what the uh, September early October storms might do, um, and then uh, and then come up with a. Uh, plan to rehabilitate the uh, the bottom end of it, which might have to be done in the in the winter time if, if uh, machinery needs to go down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you, Graham. Great report. Uh, moving on to Dr. Irwin. Some time ago, I had sent a, a request to the Minister of Health asking for some guidance uh, as to what we might expect in terms of how the waiting room and examination room will need to be modified given situation with COVID. I have still not heard a response 
you know, in fairness to them, they, they've got their hands more than full with problems. Um, but we will be following up on that. Um, the issue arose at a previous meeting relating to the doctor's meds. Mm. Is that appropriate to report on that now, or should that be? Okay. Uh, the essence is simply each year, one of the doctors takes it upon herself to order uh, prescription drugs, commonly purchased items like poison ivy cream, some, some common antibiotics. And then the idea being is that when you, when you arrive at the doctor's office and your kid's got poison ivy all over the hands, the doc can, can then sell the patient They do it at no markup. Uh, they buy the product for ten dollars. They sell it for ten dollars. It's really a convenience thing. Uh, what happened last year, and this is common, there's usually a little bit of surplus material left over at the end of the season, and normally those products can be used the following year. We had Kobe. Um, there was a change in pharmacy rules a number of years ago, and pharmacies are not allowed to have unopened drugs returned to them. So unfortunately, what happened in 2020 was drugs that normally would have been sold because they hadn't expired, now or will soon be expired. And so the doctor has asked for reimbursement of that amount. It would not have been a problem had it not been for COVID. I think the service that the doctors have provided in the past, it's one of the unique features of, of Victoria Beach, having access to that medical service without having to go to Pine Falls, without having to go to a show of good faith and, and appreciation of the services, I think it would be appropriate for, for the municipality to uh, reimburse the doctor for those out of pocket the drugs are essentially worthless. Oh, one. Yes, sir. Can you put a dollar? Can you put a dollar value on the on this item? I don't have the exact number, but it's 600, approximately six hundred dollars this year. But this yes. is not the first year that we have been asked to reimburse, that and we true. have reimbursed in the past. My concern is the doctors buy it, the doctors sell it. Doctors run a clinic in the city. I'm, I'm uncomfortable reimbursing the doctors for medication that they don't use that they have purchased. I'm just not convinced that that's our goal. I understand that I understand what you're saying and I understand what the doctors are saying. It, it is a service we provide. It's a convenience. It's a convenience, but you know, you can also get drugs delivered from Pine Falls, there's pharmacy. A kid with, a kid with poison ivy. Yeah. Might require relief of a, little, of a little more instantaneous type, yeah. but uh, so I appreciate that they provide. But Ernie but... had also mentioned that uh, you could no longer return uh, unopened meds. So basically, once you've bought it, that's, that's it. Even that's though it. they have never been opened, uh, the drugstores, the pharmacies are not allowed to, to take this back. I guess there's a concern mm -hmm. about. Yeah. about the possibility of tampering. Mm -hmm. Steve had a question. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just want to point out. Um, first of all, there is a massive amount of in-province tourism this uh, this summer, and I can tell you from personal experience, there's no lack of people requiring um, poison ivy cream uh, or, um, in, in my case, poison oak. Um, the, the, this summer, if anything, there's probably there's probably more because people are trying to get out of the city just so that they can walk around. And so I don't I don't I get that it's only 600 bucks, but this has happened before, and I don't think it's appropriate to make a pattern out of reimbursing um, for products that aren't sold. I mean, just as an example, last year we didn't uh, we didn't want to uh, reimburse a Safis for any pr um, promotional uh, material for the 100th year anniversary. Um, I mean, I don't know if if something is, if something is not sold, it's you took the risk on that product that that you brought in. So I understand and I and I, and I sympathize, but I I just don't see that it's it's our responsibility to pay for it. 
I, uh, I share Penny's uh, uh, difficulty with this form of, uh, of reimbursement. Um, however, we have done so in the past. I think if we're going to decide not to reimburse, that should be uh, explained and provided for uh, right at the outset uh, of the, uh, of the uh, doctor's uh, uh, new season. Uh, to um, uh, the 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 problem with uh, withholding reimbursement, they're going to be less inclined to carry uh, materials which are of, of benefit to our uh, to our residents. So it's it's kind of a 50 50. I I could see no reimbursement, but I'd like to begin to enforce that next year. That's a good point, Graham. Yeah, but you know, when, when you wash it, when you you know take the dollars that we've had to reimburse over the last three years. Three years ago, there was a larger amount, and that was due to a misunderstanding, incorrect ordering by one of the junior doctors. Last year, the expense was under two hundred dollars. This year, it's six hundred. It wouldn't have been six hundred had it not been for Kobe. You know, break that down. We've got two thousand ratepayers, so that's about what sixty cents. Uh, it's like twenty cents each. It's it's. it's I think the service that the docs provide and the convenience is is well, is, is the community is well served by that. And, and normally the expenses wouldn't be this high. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you know, we have in the past, I think we should continue to support our doctors. Getting doctors going forward is not going to get easier. You know, do we, do we want to have the doc say, sorry, I, I have no prescription. I have no poison ivy cream yet. You got to go to Selkirk for my policy. What do you think the reaction is going to be to that? Well, when in the past for you? That's, that's, what, what, that's, what, that's what happens when I go to my doctor. Yeah. I okay. have to go next door or, or wherever or to get next my door or next door or the superstore. I know, but, but I'm just, you know, you can get prescriptions delivered from Pine Falls. At what cost? I, I I kind of Graham Graham's kind of swayed uh, swayed me over in uh, in his argument. I'm a little bit more on yes. this side there. Yes, once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think that I think that's I, a good point. I, I honestly think that it's a fairly good point that it should have been uh, you know told uh, told him that at the beginning. Well, yeah. We do have uh, terms of reference for the doctors committee and for the doctors that need to be reviewed. Yeah. So I think yes. when we do that. Um, we can be, uh, we can have another look at this. So, all right, you've managed to sway me um, this, year. this year, but I do think it's something we need to look at because even though we have 2,200 or however many rate payers, mm -hmm. the doctors don't see 2,200 rate payers. They see maybe exactly. 400 patients or mm -hmm. 500 patients, which is fantastic. And I know it's appreciated, but it's not, uh, and it's not a lot of money. So oh, I think we'll do everything we can make. Okay. You know, I, I would that. suggest that we'll make sure that we yeah, add that comment on it on the terms of reference. That that has yet to be started. Yeah. Or we'd kind of mess yeah. things up yeah. or at least split the risk or something, 50-50 yeah. or something like that. But uh, for this year, I guess follow precedence. We have yeah. set precedence, but be prepared next year when, when we, we negotiate that. Different. Yeah, well we, we have to do something different. Okay. Oh, Steve, did you want to add? No, I, I, I think it's fair. I, I, I think it's a very fair point. So, with granddaughters, we appreciate the fact that we can walk over and get the poison ivy cream, which we did last year. For yeah. I know, I know. I can... And the poison oak cream, God, you don't want it. Worse, so much it's, worse than poison. It's Steve's favorite. <laughs> Where did you have to go to get your cream, Steve? I had to go to the city because I'm allergic to hydrocortisone. Oh gosh! Maybe we should maybe we should move on from that note. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think we are moving on. I think you, are, on. Are you good there? I'm done. Thank right. you. Thank you. Communications, yeah. Steve and or Mike. I'd like I would like to thank you both for taking turns on the BB Herald Council news every week. That's been great. Thank you. And Mike is the voice of our Facebook page, so thank mm -hmm. you for that. And uh, I hear that maybe next month what? we oh. get a, we get we get a first look 
at our brand new website. Yeah. Oh, it will come. Um, sorry, yeah, I, 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 see what that was, but um, I do just want to mention one quick thing, uh, which is that uh, Brad, um, our fire chief, is going to be getting set up uh, with Connect. We're looking sometime around the fall right now. Um, and I just want to uh, reiterate how crucial it is that residents need to sign up for this. Uh, if there's a fire, uh, or if there's a major emergency, this system is going to tell you exactly what to do in that scenario. Um, and so even if you're not uh, first in what our emergency procedures are right now, uh, then if you get set up, if you sign up to the system, then you will know what to do uh, because you will receive a text, you'll receive an email, and you'll receive a hardline phone call uh, telling you what to do, uh, depending on the, on the uh, scenario that uh, if the fire is in the southeast, southwest, north, uh, northeast, wherever it is, uh, we'll be able to tell you what to do based on that uh, preset, uh, uh, that 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 preset um, uh, location of the emergency. So it's it's critical that everybody gets signed up for it, because it's not a it's not a, it's not an if it's a when uh, an emergency happens. Good, good Can I point. just comment on Connect? Uh, I live in St Andrews, and we have the Connect service there, and it's not just being used for emergency issues; it's being used for public notices. I think yeah. that's something that, that we, we, we should do look that. at. That's, that's what some of our notices do go through Connect. Yeah. Some of our yeah. public notices. We should send yeah. one out about the fact that we don't want fridges and stoves at the garbage uh, depot. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. So, you know, well, I think that's something that we need to, to, we can use on a regular basis. Yeah. I think anything on a, on a public notice on, on on the COVID notices that we yeah, send out to the residents. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 okay, thank you very much. Uh, anything else, Mike, for communications? No, no? I think that's, uh, that was a very good point on the connect, Steve. Yeah, keep pushing that. But I think mm -hmm. numbers are good. I think there's a fair number of people signed up. Well, a lot of them that were uh, registered for email <coughs> automatically got transferred. <laughs> Um, the information gate, uh, the season is winding down and the information booth is still open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day, up to and including Sunday, September 6th. Um, are the ladies supposed to be working on the Monday? No, Labor Day is the 7th. I'm confusing. Will the ladies be working on the seventh or no? I mean, generally they're done on the sixth. No, no the, yeah, Sunday. it's mid. Isn't it midnight? midnight. On six a.m. Six a.m. Oh, six a.m. on the Monday. That's right. Yeah. Six a.m. on Monday, the seventh is when vehicles can drive in. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing at 6:05 how many vehicles drive in. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, it, I, I was there last year. For the for the running of the bulls, and it was it was a yeah. spectacle, yeah, the likes of which I've never seen. <laughs> uh, but I would like to remind contractors and outside business operators that hours of work in the in the restricted area are 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily, and all vehicles must be out of the restricted area by 7 p.m. and parked in the parking lot or driven to your home outside the vehicle restricted area. Also, thanks to Reliable Mobility in Winnipeg for once again, providing us with the scooters that we uh, rent. Mm -hmm. The girls have had no, the ladies at the booth have had no issues this year. The scooters have run well. They've been uh, very popular again, and they feel that four is the perfect number. Oh, good. Um, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and they've worked well. So uh, girls are talking about all coming back. Two of the Two ladies of the oh, confirmed or third is still thinking about it. Yeah. So uh, we'll get a report from them at the end of the season and, and go from there. But, uh, I think they're doing a great job. So thank you very much. Uh, any questions on the gate for me or Raymond? The, okay. the, the system the system would work quite well there. My, um, somebody in my family needs uh, needs passes and, and, and the system really is working quite efficiently for them. So. Great. Good. All right, building inspector, we're back to Graham. Yep, you're back to me. Uh, Curtis has submitted this uh, uh, this report. Permits issued foundations one, bunkhouse two, additions two, sheds two, one renovation uh, owing to uh, some fire damage, one deck, one demo, one veranda. Uh, total value of permits $165,150. 
and the permit fees collected four thousand and twenty nine dollars and uh, our thanks to uh, Curtis for uh, submitting his report for the month of July. I think he's been very busy this summer. He has been. Oh yeah, yeah, lots of trips out here. Yeah. All right. Any questions? Accessibility. I have nothing to report. Heritage, Steve. Um, yeah, just uh, a reminder to everybody that the um, volunteer award uh, is uh, the drop dead date for uh, volunteer applications is September 1st. Um, so again, uh, this award is going to go to the Heritage Committee. We're all going to meet. Uh, we're going to review um, all the applicants. Um, it's not uh, it's not uh, isolated down to just one for this year uh, because we want to be as open as possible. Uh, the volunteer um, the volunteer doesn't. Have, did not have to be active this year. It could have been uh, in the past, and then that way it's just it's it's more fair, so that we recognize anybody in, in our past who should uh, who should be uh, uh, who should be seen um, or, or sorry recognized. Uh, so again, it's the the, the last time for that uh, for that application is September first, and you can go to the website and find the uh, and find the form. And then the actual uh, award is going to happen next uh, summer. Every year the award will happen uh, the following year. During the summer, when everybody can, uh, when everybody can see it. Um, in terms of the trails, uh, Mike already pointed out the um, uh, the uh, sand or the, the, the a base which was put down to uh, to, to stabilize the trail. Um, I am, however, looking for uh, now. I'm looking for volunteers uh, that could come uh, to help the trail system. So this would be things like monitoring uh, any issues that, that would be uh, on the trails uh, so that we can have uh, a sort of a proper uh, proper system whereby um, volunteers all go out as, as a uh, unified force uh, to just maintain the trails rather than what it is right now, which is just sort of as people want and there's no, there's no overall uh, system to, uh, to to regulate it, so this is something that we can uh, get together, see what we all have in terms of equipment, and then go out and uh, coordinate, uh, as well as doing uh, proper checks on the on the trail system and its uh, and its status if it, if it needs a little bit of work and if it doesn't. Um, so if you just want to send me an email, then uh, then I can start putting that list together. Okay. Steve, when do you contemplate doing this work on the trails? When is going to start? Uh, it's it's something that I just I need to coordinate everybody first, and then and then we'll sort of move move on from there. The the idea would not be to do really too much work during the summer unless it's absolutely needed, because of course uh, that would be primarily up to public works. This is more just general maintenance uh, in terms of like if a, if a tree if a tree falls, public works isn't able to get to it, then uh, then we, uh, then we might be able to get out because right now people are going out and clearing it anyway. Um, uh, but uh, it, in, in terms of any sort of uh, status updates uh, it, um, with um, uh, with the um, uh, I'm, 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 I'm at a loss for words right now, but uh, a condition report, uh, then that would be done once in the spring and then once in the fall. And so in that way we can have uh, a, pro a proper understanding as to what's happening on what trail. So I'd like to get it preferably uh, sort of set up for the fall, but I'm, I'm thinking that it'll probably be the first time will be next spring or even possibly in the winter, depending. Okay. And um, Public Works has ordered a base for the AB to BB trail, and that's gonna be dumped in two or three places along the trail, and they're gonna be using some of their own equipment to spread it around and stuff. So that should be this week. How are they going to handle a stretch of sand yeah, that's close know. to the beach? Then? Is that it just keeps blowing in. It's, it's only not about 100, 100 feet. Yeah. I'm not sure how they're going to handle it. Not just beat Mother Nature. Yeah. Yeah. I won't that's support it. Yeah. No, I've walked it several times. And you've also, you've also commented that you've spoken to pedestrians and cyclists alike and yeah. Except and that one strut might be a little bit tricky, but it's still certainly navigable. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you very much, Steve. Any more questions on our reports? All right. Be it resolved that the August committee reports. Graham, Graham, you had your hand up. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, I keep putting my hand in the wrong place. Yeah, if I may, uh, just as a supplementary to the reports, uh, committee reports, um, 
I had occasion to attend the uh, Wansing Beach Cottage Owners Association annual general meeting uh, recently. I've uh, distributed uh, to uh, each of you uh, a copy of the minutes. Uh, I'd, I'd like to state, and, and I think we all agree, that we value our uh, uh, the input and our communication with the various associations throughout our, our RM. We appreciate being invited to their AGMs and also uh, receiving copies uh, of their minutes and uh, uh, good, good for them, good for all of them. Um, within the, uh, the AGM itself, there was a number of specific items uh, that were requested, asked for, and Raymond assures me that these are uh, being attended to uh, even as we speak. Uh, one outstanding item was the, uh, the bear bin on Arthur Road. And uh, just to advise that the uh, once in each cottage owners is uh, uh, circulating a questionnaire to all uh, residents to come up with a consensus uh, as to uh, uh, whether they think it should be uh, 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 moved or, or not. They're aware of the fact that we uh, are thinking long term of removing all the satellite bins, so we can expect some feedback from them um, on that. And uh, other than that, I. Uh, I invite you to read the uh, uh, the minutes. It's uh, it's good to hear from from our residents in all regions. I, I just okay. wanted to tack on uh, one thing because the last uh, the last couple of years, me and Graham uh, during the spring and the fall have been meeting with uh, with all of the associations in the RM. It was just we haven't been able to do it this year because of the COVID, which is really right. unfortunate. But if, uh, if the vaccine's available for next year and we're all uh, shot up, then uh, uh, then hopefully we can get back to that because it, it, it really did it really does help you're right you're exactly right steve and uh uh i hope we can get to it uh, early uh in the season next year and i'd be more than willing to uh to join in yeah great thank you very much that's quite a lengthy uh set of minutes from the Wanasing beach cottage owners <laughs> well they've always had a lot to say Yes, but they've always been uh, very respectful and thoughtful, and it's always been, uh, I've always enjoyed going to their meetings, so thanks for attending on, on our behalf. Yes, um, I, uh, uh, the association is aware that a number of councillors uh, uh, were, uh, were willing to attend, but they asked uh, that we just send one representative due to uh, COVID uh, uh, distancing. So it was our decision to uh, uh, respect that. And uh, it, it's, uh, you know, it's an example of how things can work very well between the RM and the associations. Yeah. Thank you very much. One further comment. Penny and I attended the annual general meeting of the Victoria Beach Club on Sunday. And in spite of some significant issues with COVID, uh, the club was able to deliver a, a very good recreational program. Uh, and things are progressing along quite nicely. And I had a chance to speak with uh, one of their fitness people, and they're actually thinking about planning. Uh, a senior focused program. Uh, you know, the recreation programs have been largely focused on younger people, but uh, they're going to see if they can't put something together for some seniors who may have some mobility issues because there's some really neat programs. You can do. So they, they're, they're taking that under advisement and hopefully we'll see something next year. They run some amazing programs and they, they worked hard to make sure COVID was. COVID protocols were implemented. They may not have been successful all the time, but they certainly put their best efforts into it. And I did that. Yeah, they, you know, the level of volunteerism within that organization is significant. Mm -hmm. Huge amounts, good hours. Yeah. All year, too. Okay, thank you very much. Anything else on reports? Okay. We resolve the August committee reports be accepted as presented. May I have a mover? Mike, seconder, Graham, thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Carrie, right. thank you. Sorry, I did. <laughs> All right, moving on to accounts and finances. Erwin. I do. Yeah. Yeah. 
Be it resolved that the following list of accounts be approved for payment. Accounts payable checks 8604 to 8645 in the amount of $1,884,298.58. August 7th payroll in the amount of $55,704.35. Visa in the amount of $5,571.92. And you still got money left? <laughs> a little bit. May I have a mover? Erwin I'm, and I'm, a seconder. I'm afraid to. Steve, thank you very much. And discussion. That must have been a Winnipeg or a Met. Lord Selkirk School Division. We had to write it an obscene amount. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Of one million eight hundred and twenty-one thousand one hundred and nineteen dollars to the Lord Selkirk School Division for care and educational requirements for eight children. Eight children. I know. Aren't we lucky we can support education? Aren't we just? Well, the provincial government in the last election promised it said they were going to phase out education taxes when the deficit was eliminated. Well, mm -hmm. I guess the deficit's not going to be eliminated for a long, long, long time. So that means everything else is like $63,000. Wasn't very much. $63,000. We were actually, we we're being fiscally responsible, ladies and gentlemen. We, we, did, we did pay for the Sandy Bay stairs in the amount of $8,163. Uh, there were some equipment repairs to high track. Uh, other than that, really no notable items. But compared to Los Lloyd Soccer, everything else pales by comparison. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, that's our single biggest payment yeah. of the year. Mm -hmm. and, and as Mike had asked, we did have funds to pay. Yep. Yep. Two payments to Second payment will be in September. There's a payment every month based on collections. And the final payment is January 31st of the following year. That's the way we're going to see. It's kind of a sliding scale. Well, based, based on, on collection. Yeah. Based on tax collection that month. So what if we what if we don't get all the taxes in, which includes the school tax? Are we expected to pay it anyway? Absolutely. And then you never yeah, we have to use our line of credit. Come the end of January, regardless of what your collections are, you have to pay the balance payable of the levy. They don't care where you get it, as long as you get it. But this is probably 75%. Oh, yes, it's a lot oh, of share. It's more than, it's more than that. that. I hope so. Yeah. It's probably like 90% of the weird. levy. Makes me feel a little better. And you got to keep in mind it has nothing to do with how many kids go to school from your jurisdiction. Yeah, exactly. It's based on a property assessment. Yeah. And your but share if of the if it has to do how many kids we have, we'd be spending maybe like a couple hundred bucks, but yeah. It, it is it is what it is. It's a hit. All right. Any further discussion on accounts and finances? All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. No business from the previous meeting, so we move on to other business. Bylaw 1610. It resolved that bylaw 1610, providing for an administrative penalty scheme for general bylaw enforcement, be given second reading. May I have a mover? Uh, Irwin, a seconder, Mike. Everybody's got their hand up. Oh, yes. yes. Any discussion on second reading? It should be noted that this is just an update to the bylaw because we amended a, we put in a new bylaw. Uh, with a penalty. So it's a bylaw to amend the bylaw because we amended the bylaw. <laughs> yes. Like that, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I don't think that clarified anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, for right. clarification, uh, uh, to put it in context, it uh, it uh, gives some teeth to 1609, banning the barbecues. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Carried, thank you. Moving on to third reading. It resolved that bylaw 1610, providing for an administrative penalty scheme for general bylaw enforcement, be given third reading and passed. Mover, I'll go to go to the screen. There and we go. Steve is a seconder. <laughs> Finally got one in there. Got one in. 
Any further discussion on third and final reading? All those in favor? Carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Moving on to Memorandum of Understanding, Policing of the Federal Pier. Be it resolved that the arm of Victoria Beach Council approves the Memorandum of Understanding between the Victoria Beach Harbor Authority and the municipal, municipality relating to policing of the Federal Pier by the Victoria Beach Police Service. Further be it resolved that the Reven CA will be authorized to sign the said Memorandum of Understanding. May I have a mover? Oh, absolutely. Mike and a seconder, Graham. Good one. Yeah. Thank you. Council's had an opportunity to read this memorandum of understanding. Mm -hmm. Did anything exist prior to this? No, we did have a agreement. Uh, and I guess it came up as a potential issue. Mm -hmm. Police tagging vehicles on the property that's contained within the lease agreement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where the memorandum says uh, enforce provincial and federal laws, that that's game and fish laws. That's everything. So we don't have to wait for the conservation officer anymore. If someone's got six lines in the water and they got a bucket full of fifty fish, uh, one of our police officers can enforce. Can I don't, provincial I, I don't know if they, yeah. can, if they can, I think within their jurisdiction. I'm not sure. Well, but this do. memorandum of understanding gives them the, the jurisdiction well, no, on no, behalf of based, the harbor. It's going to be based on whatever their areas of jurisdiction are. All we're Absolutely. saying is they're going to enforce all the laws that are within their jurisdiction. I think conservation still needs to be there for conservation. Hopefully. Oh, provincial and federal laws, uh, but under their jurisdiction, yeah. we yeah. can't we can't determine what no. they can no. what they can, can do. Right? We can't delegate to the police service what they can can and can't charge for necessarily provincially or federally. Right? Just to, that's this is just to make clear that they won't just enforce bylaws. If you're mm -hmm. sitting on the pier drinking alcohol, those types of things, they can charge you. They will charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're on federal property. It's saying they're not going to enforce the municipal the jurisdiction would be limited to the physical land rented by yes. the Harbor Authority yeah. from Victoria Beach. Mm -hmm. Everywhere else is municipal. So, so what's the difference between drinking and the number of fish you catch? Guess where you catch them. Well, well I, I guess I, I who just, can enforce that? Who can enforce it? I don't know that the people Well, the conservation can officer can can they can can, can bust yeah. you for uh for, for a, a DUI or, or or drinking in your ice sheet. And it yeah. may be sure they can. Yeah. Well, I think they have, you know, what spheres of jurisdiction they have. They it's up to them. Question too. Yeah. I think, I think it's a very important question because the police need to know what they can and can't enforce when they actually when they actually start including the peer in well, their area I of jurisdiction. I think they know that. I think they know that. Yeah. More. They're trying to know. Okay. Were, See, were, were yeah. police consulted uh, on this uh, memorandum? That's the other thing. I know Graham. Uh, not Graham. I know uh, right. Rod Bowman has spoken to Gary on several occasions, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but if not, we can hold off on this and you can run it by the police board. I, would, I, would, would you like I would to do that just like to clarify yes, that? Yes, uh, I would very much like to do that. Okay, so yeah. if, if I could... Uh, table this? Yes, if I could uh, mo make a motion that we, uh, that we table this resolution until uh, I've had an opportunity to, uh, to speak to the police board. And it would be great once you get if, if we could have this back on the agenda for the next meeting in September because you know that we get a lot of uh, extra traffic once the vehicles are allowed once, once yes, and, absolutely. And, and the pier is, yeah. uh, is popular. I, I agree. It, it is important that it it, uh, it plugs a, a gap in our police mandate to do what we and what our taxpayers expect them to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Right. okay. Thank you. Yes. I did just want to clarify one thing, though. It's like there, there hasn't been any reports of anybody with 50 fish off the pier, are there? I know that like every so often somebody has maybe more. No, but but I have heard it may just be anecdotal, but I have heard of people with uh, I think I think uh, still fishing you're allowed two lines, but uh, people with with three, four, and five lines in the water, you know, that's against the law, or or overfishing your limit. 
it's against the law. Yeah. I know conservation has caught people out on the BB pier with uh, over their limit, etc. Mm -hmm. But I think that's oh, conservation yeah. jurisdiction. Sure that it's jurisdiction yeah, but I just want to be clear that there's no instances of somebody having like a you know big 50 gallon tub there full of fish. Mm -hmm. So no, only the commercial fishermen would hope to have that. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so thanks, Mike. We'll get that back on the agenda for next meeting in September. Yeah. Uh, next up, 2021 Board of Revision appointment of members. Be it resolved, the arm of Victoria Beach Council be appointed as the 2021 Board of Revision. Further re resolved that the Reef be appointed as presiding officer and the CAO be appointed as secretary of the board. May I have a mover? Irwin, second. Graham, thank you. This is something we do every year. Council is, has historically been the Board of Revision Board uh, for assessment appeals. So that is usually in October and it's usually in the city. 14th, 14th of October. How many there are appeals? Yeah. And I think last year we there, were had, there were none. No. So who knows? We don't know, but uh, so that will be October the 14th. It's usually in the afternoon. Yeah, that's usually at 3 p.m. That's a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Steve, that's not going to work for you. Uh, my everything for me starts up on the 30th. So anytime after that, I'm not available. Um, so it would have to be anytime after six o'clock. Okay, well, we have to work with uh, with assessments schedule and uh, yeah. historically in the afternoon. So. But we still have a quorum. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So are the four of the three of you available October 14th? Uh, the, the, the date again, please. Sorry, I missed that. October 14th at 1 p.m. I we need to know because we were we will be appointing ourselves. Yep, I believe I can do that. Yep. It is a Wednesday. It will be virtual. And it may yeah, it can it be virtual? Well, I don't think they're gonna have much choice. Right. It's only tough to accommodate right. anybody. Maybe one person. So they would have to get you would have to sign them up to your go to maybe yeah. I mean the way things are going, I expect it will be virtual. Even government officials, you're not, you're not right. It's a possibility, and uh, uh, Raymond said that that's not a problem. So, okay, you can count me in one way or the other. Okay. I may be appearing as a petitioner, so I will abstain. <laughs> but you'll still have a quorum with uh, yourself. Yeah. 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 Quorum. Yeah. Yeah, that would only be for that specific. That's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Recuse yourself for the exactly. particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I expect there may be some appeals coming up from Elvis Beach. A fair number of the back lots have had like 30 or 40 or 50 percent increases. Mm -hmm. It's all attributed to sales in the area. So that's there was a reassessment. Yeah. There was a special assessment done on some back lots in Elvis Beach. Well, I know one or two of the ones you're talking about, and they were under assessed. Everybody else was assessed. <laughs> At the level that they are now assessed at, the thing was they were uh, under, they were under assessed for paying less taxes than their neighbors. Because mm. we we checked them. That's the only reason. For some reason, there must have been some glitch in assessment uh, determination. I mean, the laws are the same. Yep. It's the just the property. The land values. The land value. This has happened um, before over the years. They're identical. Lots of land values are identical. Unless there's late front versus interior, but these are all the same. They're all back. They're all yeah. their own interior lots are all gonna be the same. Land assessment on Seventh Avenue is the same right through Seventh Avenue. Land. Yeah. So yes. No different anywhere else. We'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor. Carried. Thank you. Parking. 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 Whereas during the summer months, there were many vehicles parked along PTH 59 north of Safi Road to the PR 504 intersection 
and a long PR 504 where parking restrictions do not exist. Whereas the seasonal speed limit on PTH 59 from Safi Road to David Road is 70 kilometers an hour. Year round speed limit on PTH 59 from PR 504 to 8th Avenue is 70 kilometers an hour. And the year round speed limit on PR 504 is 70 kilometers an hour. And whereas during the summer months, vehicular traffic increases very significantly on PTH 59 and PR 504, including the frequency and number of vehicles parked along sections of 59 and 504, resulting in restricted visibility for motorists and creating a safety hazard for area residents, for people leaving and entering their parked vehicles, and for other users, including pedestrians and cyclists, all of which poses a much greater risk of injury to our residents and visitors. Therefore, be it resolved that the arm of Victoria Beach Council submit a request to Manitoba Infrastructure and Transportation urging the implementation of one of the following measures to improve overall public safety. Number one, prohibit parking along PTH 59 and Provincial Road 504, or two, reduce the speed limit on PTH 59 and PR 504 to 50 kilometers an hour within the municipality's jurisdictional boundaries for the summer season. Only. All right, may I have a mover, Mike, and a seconder, You've got Steve. One or the other. Thank you, gentlemen. All, All right. right, discussion, Mike. Uh, I've already seen. I wish I would have taken pictures of that big white uh, General Motors truck that was parked just feet away from the uh, intersection of uh, 59 and David Road on several occasions on the west side. And and it's true. I mean, you could not without physically stepping out onto 59, um, mm. you, you couldn't see uh, traffic coming. And uh, I know that the beach at the end of David Path is very popular, especially with the younger families. And I don't know how many times I've seen people uh, towing wagons with little ones uh, in them uh, and having to peek around our vehicles to see if the coast is clear. So something definitely does have to be done. So you're proposing to ban parking on the west side of 59? North from David Road to to the intersection of 504 Big Night. That would be my preference. Yes, that's well, it would eliminate the hazard and the risk of crossing mm -hmm. highway, especially as you come around the bend. Yeah, because there's no there's no beach on the west side that's easy access no. there. It's all it's on the east. But I believe Raymond said the other there is a no stopping sign. We have installed a no stopping sign. We sent a resolution asking yeah. for no parking. Mm -hmm. on the west side of 69 north of David Road and they have installed a no stopping sign. They have installed yeah. Oh, yeah. There's one there. Recently? Recently. Yes. yes. So so one is like a hundred meters away it's, from it's, it's a fair distance from the corner from the intersection. Mm -hmm. I can't yeah. tell you how to Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 With a directional area. They were parking there on the weekend. Well, they were there parking legally because well, that's well, not yeah, because a lot of those people are are, are 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 visitors, and what they're doing is they're turning the corner, they're mm -hmm. hanging a U-turn probably before they even see the sign, yeah. and and cuddling up to uh, David. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, so we got what we wanted from the province as far as parking on the west side of uh, 59, uh, uh, just uh, adjacent to David Road. And uh, um, you say the signage is now up? One sign, we believe. Yeah, there's one no stopping sign. North yeah, okay. of David Road, PTH yeah. 59 intersection. Set back, I don't know. Okay. We'll have to have a look when you drive back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and really a general assessment of the, of the overall area because 59 really is a massive uh, safety hazard when you get down to it. Um, I mean, there's so many people who, I mean, so, cyclists cyclist aside, of course, we're not, we're not going to be you know, taking out cyclists here, but the problem is, is that with, with so many people parking on 59, there, there's so little room for error, um, and it just takes one person to step out. Uh, in, in the end of that highway without uh, you know somebody coming by noticing and uh, we could have a major accident so I mean I, th I think that we really need to take take a strong look as to what is going on on that highway so this is a good first step but I think that we need to we need to look at it a little bit uh, closer if uh, if I could say a few words uh, uh, on behalf of option one uh, restriction 
rather than reducing the, the speed limits um, uh, above and beyond the, uh, the end of David Road. I, I'd like to uh, uh, share a few uh, uh, remarks. Uh, the north end of 504, I continue to get um, uh, complaints uh, from residents uh, uh, of that area. The, uh, the prolif proliferation of, uh, of vehicles with boat trailers at the north end of 504 is a problem. There's too many of them. It's, it's hazard, it's dangerous, it intersects some people's driveways going out there. Uh, um, we have six no parking signs near the north end of 504, but they are too close to the end of 504. The suggestion, and I'd like to stress again, I think those, those no parking signs need to be moved southward, probably as far south as the cemetery. The object is to make parking there, you want your boat, less convenient for non-residents. Residents don't park there, they never have. We've got to make it less convenient for people to uh, to uh, 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 collect and, uh, and pile up there. And uh, um, the um, province said, uh, yes, okay, to our last application, the end of 504, I think we have to take another run at uh, moving those signs southward uh, from the uh, north end of, of 504. But I think those signs are about 100 feet from the corner of, of Olofsson and Hampton. That's where they start. But I think, he, I know you want back. to take them further yeah, back. Yeah, and I'm in full agreement. Yeah. We're yeah, making I, it too convenient for exactly. non-residents to the detriment of residents to park don't their forget, doors. This is boats. also a provincial road. And yeah. I think we, you know, we, we, we can try, but the public has no every right to park to, on the provincial road. We're under no obligation to uh, to accommodate non-residents to the detriment of residents. Absolutely. Move, move, move the signs, move the signs. You'll find that the novelty drops off and more of them will move to other launch locations. There's a functioning marina down south. The resolution is, is calling for no parking on those highways. Mm -hmm. right. That's what this and I, not saying a portion of it. Right, it's saying no parking, no parking. on either 59 or 504. Never mind where and I think, I, I think, that. I, that would bad parking at the old, the old jurisdiction. No parking on either side of 59, anyway. no parking on 504. So that means nobody's going to be parking to go to old. Beach. Yeah, and I and I, I love that, and I don't see that that would be uh, to the detriment of any of our residents. I'm sure that they, uh, those who are uh, directly concerned, would wholeheartedly support this. The other mm -hmm. arguments you could use is where can you park on highways? Where else can you park along the highway legally? There are there places you can park on a highway legally? You just don't see people parked on the like only in case of a breakdown or an emergency. Yeah, that's not part of it. Yeah, there'd be no reason to stop. But yeah, yeah, exactly. well, you yeah. can park on the side of the highway. Pardon me? You can legally park on the side of the highway. You would necessarily want to. I mean, but no, but I don't think there's any law. We were in between here and Winnipeg, you're parked on the side of the highway. It's only a matter of time when a, a police cruiser would uh, stop and ask you what uh, what the problem is. What are you doing there? Yeah, for me, for me, it, it's not a matter of exclusion. Uh, I, I've got no problem with people going to with to Mill Park. I think the way that we control the parking by Old Mill Park is okay. I'm worried about where the population gets denser, and that is David Road and North. Where there's a lot of foot traffic and that's where i would like to see better control of parking for the safety of our residents and, yeah. and the safety of visitors yeah. Yeah. and my passion as you know is for the northern uh, uh remedy of 504 where it's a problem, it is a problem. so restrict absolutely Submitting this resolution to Manitoba IT will open the door to them coming back and discussing it or whatever with the council. Yeah. Coming back with an, an alternative. 
Yeah. So well, maybe if there's um, a dialogue, I'm in favor of the resolution. Let's at least yeah. open the dialogue. I'm definitely in favor. Get get the ball rolling. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good discussion. Anything else? Any other comments? What about the? If we, if we ban the parking on 59, that's going to push more day trippers over to Albert Beach because of the pit road parking lot. And that's congested enough as it is. Yeah. So that's another problem. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. the people who access the old mill beach are not residents. No. For the most um, part, you're right. So we, I think I think very few. I think we have we have an obligation to provide some access. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I think I think the biggest argument is a matter of safety. And yes. I think we, yes. We have to be With careful. It gets, worse every, it gets worse every year. I've got friends who are car counters, and they uh, they they're telling me it's getting uh, it's getting worse every year. So uh, uh, let's. Uh, but let's pass this resolution, and then if we want to cut some corners or look for some uh, slack, we can do that in the ongoing negotiations with the highways. And are you comfortable with uh, 50 kilometers an hour within our jurisdictional boundaries on 59 and 504? Seasonally. Well, this was presented as a, this was presented as an either or. We either. Uh, yeah. A resolution on option one or on option two? Is that not the case? I don't. No, they won't do both. And I doubt they're going to reduce the speed on a provincial trunk highway below 70 kilometers. They do it within urban areas. That's right. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Because I checked the regulations. We're getting close to an urban area. Yeah, with the, oh, yeah. the population. Well, we're, we're, yeah, so so you know, slow everybody. So you make it safer for uh, for people who uh, really shouldn't be there in the first place. What does that accomplish? I am careful. Easy. And think. Uh, don't forget, public highways are public. Public beaches are public. Some of them aren't public beaches. Some of them are not public. Like on yeah. the causeway. Yeah. yeah. That's not public. Half of that is yes. Yeah. All right, so back to our resolution. Are we comfortable with what we have here? We'll start the conversation with Manitoba infrastructure. Another mm -hmm. table. Yep. All yep. right, all those in favor. Where's Sorry. my hand? There it is. I saw <laughs> your hand. Thank you so much. You got both hands on that one. Okay, moving right along. We are at, uh, didn't add anything to the agenda today. So no. correspondence, anybody want to raise anything in correspondence? Graham, Steve? No, not this time, thank you. I had uh, I had correspondence from, uh, from a resident and it has to do with uh, the practice of uh, three-day rentals. And it sounds like uh, my, my, my uh, learned compatriot Erwin is, is hearing the same thing in his area of Victoria Beach where cottages are not being rented to families for weeks at a time. They're being rented for relatively smaller periods of time, two, three days, uh, typically at a very high price, which, in, which induces large groups to go in together on the rental. And they're essentially three-day parties. It's a party uh, rental. Yeah, it, it's a party rental, essentially. Um, and it it's, uh, seems to be getting, well, it seems to be getting uh, to be a bigger and bigger problem that I'm hearing more about, uh, and not just for the noise and the, and the calamity, but also uh, under COVID conditions, the, the absolute lack of physical distancing, and then heading to the hotel or heading to the store for provisions and potentially uh, potentially being, uh, pardon the expression, typhoid Mary. Uh, I, I don't have a definite solution today, uh, however, uh, it's been suggested to me that uh, we uh, that we look into ways that we can possibly mandate that uh, rentals. Well, we understand that people rent cottages, and we're not going to we're not going to prevent people from doing that. But cottage rentals need to be a minimum of, of one week uh, in duration. We can talk about uh, we can talk about ways that we can actually mandate this and, and enforce the mandate however we can talk about it okay my concern is the fact that our residents are being deprived of enjoying their cottages and their residence because of these party rentals and 
And uh, I think it's something that we really do need to address and do something about. Uh, Steve, you wanted to add a comment in? Um, yeah, it, it just it, it goes to um, I've, I've raised this issue a couple times now, um, and there are a substantial amount of examples um, and in, including in Canada as well, Ottawa being one of the best examples uh, of imposing an accommodation tax and just general general regulations. What happened was um, that hotels were viewed as um, the primary um, body that needed to be regulated, but then you had all these online companies that uh, that came up, and uh, people are able to circum uh, circumvent uh, taxation because they rent out their cabins, and that's exactly what this resident was talking about. So you post your uh, your your cottage on Airbnb, and it becomes a nonstop party for, as Mike was saying, three days or more. Um, there is an incredible amount of uh, tax revenue which is not being generated, um, and I, I'm federal, provincial. I mean, that's that's their own that's their own problem. But municipally, uh, there are a lot of examples in Canada uh, where municipalities have brought on, brought in these types of taxes. But then you can also regulate uh, to ensure that people are aware of uh, what they're doing. Uh, when they get here, uh, outside residents uh, is, is what I'm referring to, but then we can bring in tax uh, tax dollars to um, to basically offset some of those uh, impacts from those uh, from those renters. Um, I mean, I, I, th I think that really is the best way to go um, and would be a really good thing for the municipality because again, it's increased uh, tax revenue, but we can put the, we can put that to uh, better in our own. I can my sorry my concern is that if, that if this is that th if this is a, a ploy to recognize them so that we can tax them for uh, for what's been an accepted practice in VB people are not going to come forward and admit that they rent their properties I no. am more concerned with the practice of these party rentals than generating tax revenue people are not going to voluntarily come forward and say oh I I rent my okay no but it, but if you if you uh, if you post it onto an online website. And that's, that's usually the way that th uh, this regulation works, is that um, the uh, municipality uh, contacts the, the main uh, renting uh, agencies and they say that this is our bylaw. And if, you advertise, if there's an advertisement for this property on your, uh, on your website within these borders, uh, then you're, you're required to, uh, to send uh, whatever tax amount to, uh, uh, to the RM. It's, it's a basic tax, uh, uh, business tax. Uh, it, because that's that's the way it's presented. Because that's that's what it is. It is a business. Renting is a business. We don't have a business tax on any other business, business in yeah. our community. But uh, Raymond no. had his hand up. I no, I was. No? Just oh, okay. no. I, I think you know Steve has brought this up more than once. But I think again, it's enforcement. How you know? How do you go? How do you enforce it? How do you? I think it's up to the neighbors almost to talk to the property owner in some respects, which is not pleasant, and say, look, this is what's happening. You're renting this property out for a three-day party weekend. Mm -hmm. You're disturbing the rest of your neighbors. Um, you might get a polite thank you very much. You might get an impolite thank you very much. But I, I just don't know how. I've told residents, call the police. Yes. The police will respond. But Green, Green, is... Green does have his hand up, yes. Yeah, that, that seems, seems to be my hand. Um, <laughs> um, I hope so. <laughs> I, yeah, how many people are in here? Um, I very much like Mike's idea. If there is some way that we could uh, require a minimum one week uh, rental, we have to be careful. Uh, with renters, let's not confuse renters with uh, with uh, day trippers and other uh, uh, others of that ilk. Uh, we've got to remember that a lot of our taxpayers, a lot of uh, the property owners out here, choose to rent from time to time, and uh, it's my experience that most of them are renting to repeat renters, uh, same people year after year. It's usually for uh, one or two weeks. Uh, let's uh, uh, 
Uh, let's let's that's uh, a little bit of respect for renters. To my uh, way of thinking, renters are an extension of residents, entirely separate from uh, day trippers. And I would just love it if we could. Uh, yeah, enforcement could be an issue, but it, it, enforcement's an issue on anything that we talk about. Uh, I would be very much in favor of a, a regulation, a bylaw requiring minimal one week rental. I like that very much. But how do we? Do it? The, the thing is, like even Airbnb has slammed down on this. They've come down so hard because they had multiple deaths through their renting agency before. So um, I think it was in the last year that they came down and they said that we're not doing party rentals anymore. And if there if there is a party rental and it's reported to the business, then they'll eliminate that person from their website, and so they won't be able to rent on there. The way that these taxes are done. Well, is then, well then, perfect. Then we contact. Uh, BROA or Airbnb and say, and say instead of instead of saying remit to us tax dollars uh, tell them to inform whoever is putting their wants to put their prop their VB property on that rental site that you cannot rent this property for less than seven days exactly and any type of uh, fee that we might impose I mean uh, imposing a fee on a party renter does not help our residents one darn bit uh, in terms of them being uh, affected by this practice mm -hmm. having been affected personally by this problem I think Mike's suggestion about contacting the police and reporting excess noise yes. and disturbance of the peace is the only practical solution enforcement mm -hmm. Uh, you know, are we going to hire a bylaw officer to, yeah. to check on rentals? Uh, you know, I think I think most renters, most land, landlords who rent out, do it in a reasonable way. Mm -hmm. What Graham said is true. You know, we get repeat. The majority, yeah. There's a cottage two doors down. Uh, they, they rent to the same family every year, mm -hmm. and everything's fine. Mm -hmm. you now, people on the other side, well, uh, you know, I've complained to the owner of the property. I've yet to receive a reply. We'll see. My only other possibility, and I don't know if it can be done, is if we could lay a charge on the owner. We can create a bylaw, alter a bylaw, where if there is an incident, the police could charge the owner as well as whoever's, well, whoever's renting. Would, would that be an amendment to our zoning bylaw? Also, the noise bylaw. The zoning bylaws are real complicated. Sure. Yeah. Here yeah. Yeah. So we, we have a noise bylaw. We yeah. could That's certainly amend it. That's, I think so. I think that would be the one. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. If, if, if I can just comment on, on the concern about um, people for uh, personal renters and repeat renters that, that are, you know, they come every year, um, that are the ones that, uh, you know, you're sort of afraid of, like, why, why would we be taxing them? Um, those accommodation taxes do have exemptions for that so if it's like a family rental or something along those lines then there are standard exemptions in in most in most of those bylaws that have been written uh, in, in other jurisdictions so um, again these, these type I, I really think that we should consider it because those types of taxes are meant for the business that's operating within within the RM and um, I mean I can get back to you the amount of money generated in one year from the uh, from the auto tax was just astounding. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I remember when the first time I saw it, it floored me. Um, I mean, we're scrounging for money all the time. This is an ongoing issue in the RM, and if we can specifically target people who are operating these businesses but are usually going to partiers, then I don't see why we wouldn't uh, try to generate some revenue because that that can go to the police. That could go ultimately if you really wanted to consider like a bylaw officer. There would be fun, there'd be more money for something along those lines, but there's there would be more money generated for the RM. Um, but the, per, the personal uh, renters, those can be exempt. Well, you can't just you don't want to go too far down that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's not go too far down that tax road, Steve. How many people do you know who rent their cottages responsibly and declare it as income? Probably not. So let's let's lighten up on the on the T word. They don't even have the right insurance. Yeah, yeah. they may not have the right insurance. Yeah. I, you know, I, yeah. I think yeah. I I just think that if you're going to start charging uh, renters 
then you're going to have to inst institute a business tax or a business fees. license for every business that operates within the municipality. Now, maybe that's not a bad idea, but um, I, I don't think you can target, I don't think it's fair to target party rentals. Uh, you know, some people rent their cottage for a weekend wedding. You know, so how do we say you can only rent it for seven days if, if somebody's having a wedding down there and they want to rent it to a family for a weekend? You can't do a bylaw and cherry pick. No. The bylaw applies across the board. Like you that. could, you could, you could you say know, all of these all discretion. All of these ideas are good, but they're simply not enforceable. And it, could, it, could, it, could, it, could I ask one simple question? Do we, do we want tourism in the RM? No. Like are, are we a tourist destination, an active tourist destination, trying to get more people? Or, or are we, as much as our amenities can support? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So then I don't see why we wouldn't put a general tax to try to just to to regulate anybody who's coming into the RM. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's standard it's standard practice in almost all municipalities to have a business tax. Well, I'm, I'm glad I was able to broach the topic, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, I think we should. I, I think now now that uh, now that we've peeled the skin off the onion, we can talk more about this uh, as time goes on, and uh, and uh, better thought can go into uh, discussing uh, future actions. So. Okay. Thank All you. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Steve, and thank you, Graham, as well. Anybody else have any um, correspondence? Yes. Um, I've received some correspondence from uh, the Alfred Beach Property Owners Association, and there's still some ongoing concerns about the Thompson property. Um, some people are, are of the opinion that the municipality should be taking up the legal fight against Mr. Thompson. And, he responded that and, and, I, and I tend to agree. The question that was raised in the email is there was there's mention of the, of the existence of a legal opinion relating to uh, Thompson's ability to prevent people from walking along the beach. Does such a legal opinion exist? I know of none. We there. have an opinion that was, okay, let me find my, I'm about to respond to that. To that person. So if I can read it, part of it. Yeah, yeah your response was great. We have, there, there's been another email though. We the RM refers to a legal opinion that was written by Herb Peters, the Bacon's Macaulay and Thorvaldson. It was sent to the Lake Winnipeg Shoreline Erosion Advisory Group in August of 2000. But this is a public document. I'm going to send it to the resident who contacted us. Um, it does not refer to a specific property. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, yeah. I've, I've seen that document. Okay. It, so it's not specific. It is not specific yeah. to the issue in Albert Beach. But as I've said to at least one resident, this is not a municipal issue as it involves the protection and the preservation of privately owned property. Um, and every one of us have a right to protect our property yes. from trespassing, from abuse, et cetera. Uh, the BB police can and will attend if calls are made uh, and will deal with the, with, with the powers within their jurisdiction and authority. So if there are issues on private property, the property owner has every right to contact police and say, please come and help. This is what's going on. But we don't own any of that property in Albert Beach. It's all privately owned uh, to the water's edge as far as we know. So actually into the water, into the water, depending on, <laughs> right? So it, it's a private dispute between residents, unfortunately, and we don't have a dog in this fight. So if, if residents want to obtain their own legal advice, they're free to do that. <clears throat> but this is not a, a municipal legal battle. Perhaps it would be appropriate to, to direct, or at the very least, carbon copy that email to association mm -hmm. so that so that we can disseminate that information and, and eliminate the misunderstanding that's <laughs> around. You know, I understand the frustration of residents who've been able to use that shoreline and, and now they can't. Have you seen what Mr. Thompson's side looks like? No, I haven't, but I just you know, it's his private property. Yeah. We, we had a 
across your front yard yeah. every day? Oh, yeah. Throwing garbage and diapers and bottles and the sign says keep out even if you have been trespassing for 50 plus years. Uh, well, <laughs> well, we, we had a similar situation at one thing, and, and the bottom line is, as Penny said, uh, 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 it's uh, beyond municipal uh, uh, authority. The, the bottom line, all all this is that council has to continue to support our property owners' rights. Period. So, so we're not. I don't think we need to take sides in any of this. We just need no, to get to let's just clarify our position. Exactly. Uh, it should it should be noted that that legal opinion from Mr. Peters uh, covers all possible lakefront uh, scenarios in terms of ownership of land, and one of the scenarios specifically uh, com is comparable to what Mr. Thompson's property is. So it spells out what the ownership rules would be uh, under those terms and conditions. So, you 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 uh to the high water mark, which is what 721. Well, no, it's it's physically where the water is. Oh uh, no, I know. I seem to recall that I have read under riparian rights that it's it's where it's apparent the high water mark is, and you can usually tell by uh, changes to the to the. But anyway, I'm I'm not getting into it today. So, 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 yeah, that we started talking about riparian rights. Yes, we do have a depth noted on them and yes. some of them go back to 1885 or mm -hmm. you know uh, they have they have gone right into the water you'll find in this office is a special plot plan which was uh is devised by winnipeg land titles office they did this to identify what the properties look like uh, so there's like four or five of them that belong to mr thompson that belong to other private owners and <coughs> the one that belongs to the municipality or two of them. Yeah. And all they did, the only reason they did that is it's not a legal plan of survey, it's a special plot plan. And that's just for identification purposes of the parcels because some of the parcels are really, really odd shapes. Um, and the entire plot plan where it's lakefront goes to the water's edge. So Mr. Thompson would have an original title uh, he would have a secondary one that would relate to the special plot plan, but he also had the original plan that would have uh, descriptions, more in more in depth description. Survey point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. At the time of survey. Yeah. Yeah. Which would Guess what? None of us are lawyers. None of us are lawyers, and and uh, it's not something that the municipality should get involved in. Position. It was a very good idea. And I, I uh, will be sending something off to. Uh, Copying all council. Did you have your hand up or you're just doing this? Oh, that's good. Okay. All right. Anything else in correspondence? We did have that uh, email relating to the post office. Is that something that should be discussed or perhaps the camera? No. No. Uh, I, so, I think we can probably hold yeah. off on that at the very least until we've made a final decision on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, extra bike racks. There was a request for extra bike racks at uh, the Sunset Path, and I did have an opportunity to talk to Public Works, and they don't have any extras at the moment. And Mike won't let us take them from the market area. <laughs> They're used. They are used, but That's also crazy. it should be noted that the price of lumber has at least doubled. Mm -hmm. yes. At least doubled. So uh, while we could make more, mm -hmm. it's a uh, Little more pricey proposition than it used to be, but um, you can always just get a mill. We have a whole bunch of dead trees we need to, you know, work with. <laughs> I was thinking exactly the same thing. There you well, go. Which, which one of you guys want to spend the winter treating the lumber by hand after we've milled it? Anyway, um, you know, if there are any extra bike racks, uh, Public Works is aware that some are needed, some are needed near the parking lot, some are needed on some of the paths. Yeah. Right now we don't maybe, see the maybe we should, and maybe we should start thinking about building some more in preparation for for next year uh, as a winter works project maybe uh, uh, with our public works group uh, maybe just uh, sub it out but um, uh, if, if we don't have enough bike racks right now we ain't going to have enough next year either so we really start we really ought to 
put something in motion to make sure we have more bike racks for next year is my suggestion. For sure. And bike, uh, bike sales have gone through the roof this oh, summer. Man, yeah. All right. That was all I had. Anything else? All right. Moving on then, gentlemen, to adjourn. Be it resolved that the August 18th, 2020 regular council meeting be adjourned. Next regular council meeting to be held on September 1st, 2020. Right now it says at 1 p.m. Uh, 705 1661 Portage Avenue in Winnipeg. We will have to change that. Can I have a mover, please? Thank you, Mike. Seconder, Steve. Um, I know, Steve, you're going back. You are going to work full time. So you <laughs> Look at that smile. Yeah. So, um, pardon? But apparently, I got grade eight, so I'm going to be happier. Grade eight, okay. So, that means, though, that our 1 p.m. meetings will not work for you. They work for everyone else. I just want you to know that. <laughs> we have a vote. <laughs> Well, sooner or later we have to get back to normal seven o'clock alternating back and forth uh winnipeg uh, victoria beach just keep that in the back of our minds please yeah but the uh the problem with moving them back to the beach right now is still the issue of a venue uh, yeah. a safe yeah. venue and the issue of being able to record with go to meeting work at the beach, you need it, it won't. You don't have the bandwidth. Probably don't have the bandwidth. So we have to record at the beach. And if council still has to be separated wider mm -hmm. in a pub, <clears throat> excuse me, in a public space, that's going to be more difficult. So it seems like we're still stuck, not stuck. We're still going to be here. COVID, COVID meeting. Okay, I have to go back to just camera and upload the next day. Uh, like we used to. It's just spreading council out, and then if you've got yeah. people coming, right? Yeah. So until things change dramatically, COVID-wise and venue-wise, I think we're we're still here. But uh, instead of 1 p.m., it looks like it will be 7 p.m. on September 1st. 6:30. When do you go back to work? When do you start work? 6:30. Like 6:30 should work just fine for me. 6:30 would work okay. Uh, that, that, that if, if that's easier on everybody else, then that that, that would be uh, just fine for me. Well, the reason for 6.30 instead of 7 was to accommodate the general public to get in our uh, our bizarre uh, uh, high-rise uh, building uh, rules. Uh, will any members of the public be admitted to the September 1st meeting in uh, Winnipeg? No, but we still need to get up the elevator. We need to get up the elevator. Then it should be... Pardon? We still need to get up the elevator yeah. too. So 6.30 works yeah, for 6 30. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll have to change that till September 1st at 6.30. Yeah. Yeah. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor? Carrie, thank you, gentlemen. Have a good rest of the day. Have a good one, guys. Happy teaching. Yeah, way to go, Steve. Congratulations. Well done. Congratulations, Steve. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Yep. No, it's still recording.